Good morning, Grace Church Draw Through Class. It's time to study Philippians uh, on this uh, beautiful Sunday that we have today. And uh, we are looking forward to spending the time together and learning from God's Word. Uh, as we normally do, let's, uh, let's open in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this time that you've given us. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity to teach your word. We ask that you reveal the true meaning of your word to us as uh, what we want to do is show our love and joy in you uh, by learning your word. We thank you, Lord, that uh, we have a safe place to uh, film this. And Lord, we lift up our Grace Church family. And for anybody that's not feeling well, Lord, help them get better. And uh, we lift up all those in the world who don't feel too good right now, Lord. So um, please help them. And in Jesus' most precious holy name, all God's children say, Amen. Okay, uh, let's see. Do we have any birthdays? We'll, we don't know yet because we're waiting for you to email us. You'll see, my, uh, you'll see my email address go across the bottom here at some point, and you can email us, or you can write us a letter. Um, I'm in the church directory under Mark and Shelley Goodson, and uh, you can write us a letter. In fact, we got some letters today. But first of all, I would like to uh, thank our producer director today, uh, Pastor Nate. He's behind the camera today and, and uh, doing all of that kind of good work. And we just want to give a shout out to Nate and say thank you. And also, Hello. JoJo. <laughs> JoJo is our guest artiste today. She is drawing for us. And uh, so you guys can follow along as JoJo uh, draws through our lesson today. Um, by the way, we did see uh, some posting on some social media. We saw the Holloways. Hello, Liam. Shout out to Liam. How's it going? And uh, we uh, uh, want to say uh, uh, thanks, uh, thanks be to God that we have this communication technology that we can all still share um, in our draw-through class. Also, uh, Roma wrote us a letter. Roma wrote us a nice letter. And... Um, she, she uh, drew uh, some uh, nice pictures, and we appreciate that so much. Roma also asked uh, some questions. My favorite color is blue. Uh, my favorite food, um, vegetables, and chicken. <laughs> we eat a lot of chicken. <laughs> lots of vegetables and lots of chicken. And uh, what do I like to do? I like to spend time... Uh, with my family, uh, and we, uh, we spend a lot of time gardening. We grow beets and squash and tomatoes and beans and uh, peaches and uh, grapefruit and lemons and lots of things in the garden. We, gr we grow lots of things in the garden. And my favorite animal is my dog, Jaeger. Jaeger, come here. Oh, come here. Oh, come here. Come here. This, is my, this is my dog, Jaeger. Hey, buddy. <laughs> So today we're studying Paul's letter to the Philippians. Now, the Philippians lived in a place called Philippi, just like uh, we live in America, so we're called Americans. And so the people who lived in Philippi live in, are, are called Philippians. And uh, sometimes this book is referred to as the book of Philippians, and sometimes it's referred to as Paul's letter to the Philippians. And that's what it really is. It's Paul's letter to the Philippian church, to the church in Philippi. Uh, Philippi was uh, very special to Paul uh, for uh, many reasons. Uh, one, he was called to this region uh, by a specific vision from God during his second missionary journey in which a man was pleading with Paul to come over and help. In Acts uh, chapter 6, verse 9, it tells us, during the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. You see, Philippi was in the land of Macedonia. And so Paul has had a very specific uh, vision uh, from God uh, to come and help the people there 
at Philippi. Uh, Paul was warmly received by the Philippian believers and a local jailer who Paul saved from suicide or possibly execution uh, formed a long-lasting friendship and bond with the Apostle Paul. Um, later, hearing that their beloved friend was in prison, because Paul was in prison at this time, the church, the, the Philippian church, sent a special gift to Paul by a man named Epaphrodites. Now, even though chained to a Roman guard, Paul is so full of joy that he virtually laughs out loud as he writes, Joy and rejoice are the themes of the book of Philippians, again, sometimes called Paul's letter to the Philippians. So now draw the double circle. Draw this double circle. And Paul embracing Jesus. So that's where you're going to follow along with Jojo as she draws this double circle right here. And this is Paul embracing Jesus. Christians throughout the centuries have been awed by Paul's consistent joy in all circumstances. How does Paul remain up all the time? Paul would say that answer is easy. Stay close to Jesus. We illustrate the intimate relationship between Jesus and Paul with a bear hug embrace. Paul can scarcely think of anyone else. He lives, breathes, eats, drinks, and deeply loves Jesus. Paul, in fact, references the name of Jesus over 40 times. He desperately wants the love he feels for Jesus to be experienced by everyone. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 9, Paul says, And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. Now draw the prison door and the silhouette of Paul with the soldier. There's Paul preaching to one of the soldiers that are guarding him. Paul is really actually happy about being in prison. He says to his Philippian friends, please don't worry about me. Being in jail has actually turned out for the spread of the gospel, so rejoice. Now, write guards. Yeah, write guards there. Paul's on fire with the gospel message that he declares. The whole palace guard and everyone within hearing distance has heard the gospel. Paul is not bound. He now has a captive audience in the jail, and one is even chained to his arm. So Paul is actually, uh, he's, not, he's not sad at all. He's rejoicing. Now write brothers. Another consequence of Paul's imprisonment is the strong encouragement his imprisonment has given to other believers. They are now bold to speak the word without fear. Paul is overjoyed. In other words, his friends and brothers and sisters in Christ who are outside, they're not in jail, they're free. They look at Paul who's in prison and they say, wow, he's in prison and he's writing us and he has all this joy. We're out here and we're free to preach to everybody. So we should really be preaching because we're free out here and Paul's in prison and he's preaching. So they encouraged everyone to uh, share the gospel with everyone else. Now write enemies right there. Paul says that there are those who oppose him. However, even in this, Paul rejoices because Christ is preached. There is nothing else that matters to this servant of God. And that's Paul. Now draw the sign hanging from the bars up there and write rejoice. Paul does not see problems. He sees only opportunities. Joy to him does not depend on money or popularity or pleasure or power. The key is relationship with Jesus. Because of that closeness, Paul has learned how to be content in all circumstances. In chapter 4, verse 11, Paul says, I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content 
whatever the circumstances. And that's a big part of this uh, message uh, that Paul is writing to the Philippians. You know, uh, be content with what you have. And, and be content with Jesus and God and, and God's word and not for material things of this world. Now, draw this arrow. Yeah, there, here's the arrow. Draw this arrow. There it is. And Paul tells us, For I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. Paul acknowledges the possibility of being freed from prison, but he would say, my freedom from this cell does not depend on Rome or me escaping from prison. Rather, it depends on two things. Right, prayer. Paul has been in and out of many problems. He has seen the hand of God move powerfully in deliverance many times. He has heard a lot. He knows prayer works. No doubt the account of Peter's deliverance from a Roman cell the night before he was supposed to be beheaded strongly impacted all believers in Paul's day. A praying church had prayed for grace and mercy, and God answered. Now draw the dove. There's the dove. And write deliverance. Paul also knows the power of the Holy Spirit. This friend has the power to close the eyes of the guards, make chains drop off of wrists, and open iron gates automatically. Paul says, he is my deliverance. This is my earnest expectation and hope, writes this man of God. In nothing shall I be ashamed, but God will be magnified in my body. Now, draw the basket of fruit here and this tombstone. Paul is torn between staying on earth or going home to be with Jesus. The irony of this statement is, once again, Paul's going or staying has nothing to do with Rome. It's his decision. Paul's saying, if I'm executed by the Romans, then I get to go to heaven to be with Jesus. And as I continue to live, I get to spread the gospel. And he's happy either way. Now write, fruit and preach. So Paul's single ambition is life, in life was to preach Christ. So much so that he says, for me to live is Christ. The apostle works for fruit, and for him to live means more fruit among the Philippians and other cities where he has established churches. He has had his heart set on Spain for a long time, and he will not be robbed of that ministry by a premature death. So what does Paul mean by fruit? That's a, that's a, that's a, a great question that a lot of people ask. Um, he means that Christians bear fruit by spreading the gospel, by spreading the word of God, and in prayer, and by being good examples of Christians. That's what it means by Christians producing fruit. Now, draw the check mark right there. There we go. Very nice. Um, so evaluating his alternatives, Paul concludes, I know that I shall remain and continue with all for your progress and joy of faith, that your rejoicing for me may be more abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. But Paul does not want the lesson of his decision to be missed. He encourages them to stand fast in one spirit whether he is with them or not, and to not be afraid of their adversaries. He also prepares them. You have the privilege to not only believe in Christ, but also to suffer for his sake. Now, draw this J. Draw this big J right here. Uh, follow along with Jojo as she... Uh, draws the big J, and the dividing line, this, divide, this dividing line right here, right, it stops right there, 
and um, write Jesus. Above there, write Jesus. Uh, for Paul, there was only one model to follow, and that's of Jesus Christ. And we feel the same way. That's our, that's our model. We, we want to follow Jesus Christ. Paul sets before the church several challenges. He asks, make me really happy by being of the same mind, no selfishness, and be humble. Now, draw this banner right here. Draw the banner right there. And um, the head of the figure on both sides of the line. So draw this side, this, his head on this side, and his head on that side. Um, and write, in him and in you. And in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, Paul tells us, in your relationships with one another, have the mindset of Jesus Christ. Actions are always preceded by a decision in the mind. Therefore, he says, get the same mind as Christ. The battle is either won or lost in the area between your ears, right? That's where everything starts in our minds. The battle is either won or lost right here. Because your mind is where your thoughts occur. Jesus had the right mindset, pleasing the Father in every way. We must do the same. Be quick to identify something trying to get into your mind that is not of Christ and just dismiss it. Just get rid of it. Just give it to God. Just say, take this. I don't want it. So now draw the rest of the figure here. And in chapter 2, verse 6, Paul writes, Who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Even while Jesus enjoyed full equality with God, he was God. Remember in uh, John chapter 1, verse 1, we learn that Jesus is God. But he chose to empty himself of that glory, that rank, and privilege of the Godhead. Paul declares that we must follow his example and release our rights. Without losing his self-nature as God, Jesus was born as a human baby, sharing fully, except for sin, in our human nature. He became a man. And that wraps up our lesson on Philippians today. Great job. Great job. Good job, Jojo. And great job behind the camera, Mr. Nate. And uh, we, we have enjoyed this time in the Word, and we're going to, uh, we're, we're going to uh, close in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this time that you have given us uh, to be in your Word, to share your Word with, uh, with each other and our families, our loved ones. Um, and being a part of the Grace Church family. Uh, we ask that you guide us and lead us throughout our week and uh, show us the way and um, uh, reveal the true meaning of your word to us as we study in your, in your word, the Bible. Uh, we ask that you protect us and our families and our Grace Church families. We pray for all those in America and around the world who are sick, and we ask that you guide the doctors and the nurses. We love you, Father God in heaven, and all God's children say, Amen. Amen.